All right, I just got back from Disney World. Um, I've been there every year for the past 15 years, sometimes multiple times. So um, I know the parks pretty well. So um, I always see a lot of people walking around with DSLR cameras. Um, I bought my first DSLR about six years ago. So um, I remember when I went to the parks back then, when just buying it, I was uh, wondering if um, what lens I should bring um, or not bring, and uh, did I need to buy another lens. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to go through a beginner, um, just buying a first DSLR, what lens should you bring, um, should you buy another one, and uh, kind of keep it at its budget, and then I'll go maybe more of an uh, intermediate level of what I, I typically bring to the parks. Um, so here, here we go. We're starting out with the... Uh, you just bought your first DSLR, beginner level, and uh, you just spent a thousand dollars on this camera. So it comes, comes with uh, most of them come with a kit lens. Um, typically, um, it doesn't matter what manufacturer, Canon, Nikon, Pentax, um, they all have a kit lens, typically an 18 to 50 millimeter lens. Uh, now, the reason they all make pretty much the same kit lens and put it on there because it covers a nice focal range. Um, uh, all the all the lower end DSLRs are crop sensor cameras. Um, so the 18 to 55 is more, uh, it's like a 28 to 85 millimeter range if you're thinking of film and you just bought a you know, DSLR. But anyway, so you've got your 18 all the way out to your 50 zoom there. So it covers a nice focal range at, at, at 18. It's kind of a little bit wide and then at 50 it's uh, a little bit more zoomed in which would be nice for portraits so you got your 18 which you could get uh, the big castle there at uh, um, in, in Magic Kingdom and you could also fit the ball um, from Epcot and shot nicely um, being back a little far and you could also get some portraits um, nice ones with this so it's recommended I would recommend that bring in that um, and you're thinking well that you just said that covers a nice focal range would I need to bring in another lens? Uh, yes, you would. I would recommend one. You could survive with this, but um, just if you want to get those really nice shots, um, maybe you're only going to Disney World once, um, you want to get the most out of your pictures. So I would recommend a telephoto lens. Um, every manufacturer makes one. Like I said, Canon, Nikon, Pentax, they all make their own version of a somewhere uh, close to this, a 70 to 300 millimeter lens. Um, I would recommend that. The reason being, say you're at um, Animal Kingdom, um, you want to be able to, on that safari, that Kilimanjaro safari, and be able to get that lion way far away um, with that. that will, you'll be able to do that when you have that 300 millimeter lens. So uh, most of those are around a hundred bucks um, used um, around 200 new. So check out eBay if you're on a budget looking for something used. Um, uh, so I recommend that. Th this is the one that I bought and it's a, the same price but it's a third party manufacturer. This is from Tamron. It's the 70 to 300. The reason I bought this one, I like this one, is because it has a macro feature. So when you're up in the 80, uh, 180 to 300 range, you can switch it into a macro mode. And instead of your uh, closest focusing distance with this lens being six feet, meaning if you go in uh, to four feet, it won't focus. So the minimum focusing distance is six feet. So you have to be six feet back. With that macro mode, you, you flip that switch and you'll be able to get, um, instead of six feet, you'll be able to get up to about three feet. So. Uh, that's why I got this, so it's kind of like two-in-one lens. So it's a nice lens, and it's um, it's slightly cheaper used. You find it about 90 to 100 bucks on uh, eBay, and they make them for all manufacturers, like I said, for whatever DSLR camera you have. Also, I didn't mention, uh, so, so you get those animals at Animal Kingdom, but you could also get, uh, say you're watching a parade in uh, downtown Disney, or uh, not downtown, in Magic Kingdom. So. Uh, this will allow you, if you're watching the parade, to zoom in and just isolate that character on the float or, or whatever they're on or, or just marching in the parade. Uh, you'll be able to isolate them out of 
all the other crowd uh, background stuff. So this, that's why I would recommend this. And uh, actually at that 70 millimeter also, it's a great uh, portrait lens. Um, Cause at 70 millimeters, uh, typically they're at F4 and it's a nice um, sharp, um, and you'll get a little bit of blur in the background for a nice, uh, nice portrait shot. Okay. So those are two lenses. You could survive with those. Say you want to um, take pictures on the rides. Well, at Disney World and most theme parks, you're not allowed to use flash photography on rides. So this is the third lens I would recommend so you could get some shots on the rides and not disturb all the mem other um, members or people um, on the rides with your flash. So it'd be curious and don't use your flash on rides. And let other people enjoy the rides. So, um, how you can take um, some shots on the ride is with this, and uh, every manufacturer has their own version of it, but uh, a 50 millimeter prime lens. Uh, some people call them nifty 50s because they're, they're cheap. They're around 100 bucks, 150, depending on which manufacturer you get. Um, there's a prime lens, meaning it's a fixed focal length. Um, you can either get a 50 or a 50 or a 50 or a 35, whichever you prefer. 35 being a little bit wider. I typically like the 35s better. Anyway, so the, um, either one will work. Um, if, um, 50, um, it will go all the way down just because, uh, it will go down all the way down to an aperture of f1.8. f1.8, the aperture means it's it's open really wide, so it lets more light in. More light in means it's better for uh, low light shots. So that's why what you can use on the ride and not use your flash. You'll still have to turn your um, ISO up on your camera um, and and take that shutter speed down to around 60 or maybe even 45, depending on how sturdy your hands are and, and the motion on the ride. So you do that and turn your ISO up. Um, um, you'll have to use um, manual focus. So you could switch it in the manual focus. The reason being, um, some of those rides are super dark, so it, it, your camera can't focus really well when it's really, really dark. So just keep that in mind. It's, it's better for, it, it would sit there and search try to find the shot. So I'd recommend just switching into manual mode. When you can switch it into manual mode, it won't use the annoying uh, assist beam. You want to turn that off in camera um, to not to distract for other riders. So these are around a hundred bucks. Um, they're made of plastic typically. Uh, you get a little bit uh, better version. It's made out of metal for more money. But uh, this, with that, the Nifty 50, um, so recap for beginner, Nifty 50 for the rides, and um, forgot to mention these also make very, very good portrait shots because you get the blurred out background with the uh, F1.8. Really blows out the background. It doesn't matter how far away you are. It does a really good job of, with a shallow depth of field. Um, so recap, Nifty 50. Telephoto lens, 7300, and your kit lens on your camera. That's all you need if you're uh, maybe a beginner and going to Disney World. Now I'm going to go through a little bit uh, more advanced, like an intermediate uh, level, what you would want to bring to Disney World. Like I said, I've been there uh, quite a few times. I've been to Epcot 20 plus times over the years. So I know the parks pretty well, and I'll uh, bring my DSLR when I go. So. Uh, you've got your, your DSLR, you've been shooting for a while, uh, you, uh, you know your, your kit lens pretty well, you like the focal length, but maybe it's not sharp enough for you, uh, you're looking for something a little bit more um, um, for it. So, uh, I would recommend replacing your kit lens. Um, typically the kit lenses are uh, go from f3.5 at uh, 18 millimeters and at 50 millimeters, they go up to f5.6. So at f5.6, maybe you're not getting the desired uh, shallow depth of field that you would like, or it's not performing at 50 millimeters in the lower light conditions like you'd like. So I would recommend upgrading your kit lens to more uh, something like what I'm shooting with now. It is a Tamron 
uh, 17 to 50 millimeter f 2.8. That f 2.8 is through the entire focal range. Now you get one of those, uh, one of these lenses um, for $500 new, and, that, and it's a third-party lens. It's a Tamron, but they make them for all the manufacturers: the Canon, the Nikon, the Pentax. Or you could get used on eBay. Um, the third-party lenses don't hold their value as well as uh, as the actual brand name Canon. Nikon stuff, so you could actually get them a little cheaper on um, eBay. They don't hold their value as well, so that's why you get real, um, you can get some real quality lenses um, for a cheap price, and they perform just as good. Um, I found um, than the brand name cameras, so I would recommend that if you want to go with the Nike, uh, let's say a Canon, um, the 17 to 50 um, f 2.8 on that one, it is. Um, I think it's around $900. So that shows you the value you get there. And, and the images are really similar. You have to actually go in there and pixel peek to find the differences. So you've got that. You've replaced your kit lens, let's say. So um, so I bring my telephoto just when you're out on uh, Animal Kingdom or wherever and you're wanting to get just uh, some nice telephoto shots. Um, you could upgrade this if you wanted to something a little bit uh, better um, at Canon users. You could get the uh, uh, L series lens, the 70 to 200 F 4 L series. It doesn't have image stabilization. Um, the reason I would recommend that one is because it weighs about as half as much as the one with image stabilizations. So that would be a good upgrade for this. It only goes up to 200 millimeters, but that's that would be good. And it, it would be light. You don't want to weigh yourself down with you know that f f uh, f 2.8 is version that weighs god not, it's a ton so i wouldn't want to walk around the park with that so um kit lens 70 to 300 and maybe you wanted a little beefier this the 70 to 200 l series if you're canon um nikon has a similar one i'm sure um but I brought, I brought i just stuck with this because this is plastic and it doesn't weigh much and i don't take a ton of of shots at 300 millimeters in the park just when i'm on that animal kingdom um, safari ride i'll use it quite a bit okay what else we want to bring you want you want your uh your, your camera shots to actually stick out um, thousands and thousands of people have taken shots at disney so you want yours to somebody to look at friends and family and say wow that's an awesome shot i hadn't seen one like that before so the way you could do that is by a kind of a specialty type lens, a ultra wide uh, lens. The one I use um, on this last trip is a Pentax 10 to 17 millimeter at 10 millimeters. It's like a fisheye. So you get some really unique shots. Um, uh, one shot I did, um, you know, you're say you're at Magic Kingdom and you have your kit lens on and you take it at 18 millimeters. Um, you get as close as you can and to get the whole castle in your shot. Well, there's still crowd people walking around. You can't get get the shot without the crowd people with it. So I put this on, put it put it at 10 millimeters, walked straight up flush to the front of the castle right there. I was able to get the whole shot of the castle with no crowd people moving through the front of the shot because I'm right there at the front. So that's, a, that's one good reason to have this. Also, uh, when you're walking around Epcot, all the countries, you have some nice architecture and stuff. So uh, an ultra wide or fish angle or, or fish eye is nice for, for getting those uh, shots of uh, architecture type stuff. So you get these nice curves with the building uh, distorted curves that make for unique shots. So this one would be something to give your photography a little oomph. This uh, this was for Pentax, uh, like I said, the 17 or 10 to 17. It was about 500 bucks on B and H. Um, you can, there's versions for Canon and Nikon, so just kind of check. They might be pretty close. If you're wanting to go on more of a budget, you could go with a just a, uh, a fixed one, um, a Rokinon or Sam Yang. They're all kind of similar. Uh, I think those are the, uh, I think they're fisheye. They're just fisheye prime. So they're like F, or uh, eight millimeters. Um, typically are. I've used one before. I can't remember exactly. I think it might even have a review. But anyway, um, you can buy one of those. Those are about 200 bucks. So it'd be cheaper 
way than this. But uh, th this Pentax is really nice because it's lightweight. The, the, the Nikon and Canon versions probably weigh about double this. And this is super small, so it's nice to fit in your bag. I'll probably be doing a review on this. This lens has been out for a while, so there's other reviews out there, but I, uh, I really like it and enjoy it. Okay, so that, that will give you a unique feel to your photography. And I uh, forgot to mention, I'd also bring that f1.4, 1.8 uh, prime lens like, like I mentioned in the beginner level for the same reasons. You might want to upgrade and get the f1.4 if you're serious um, about uh, maybe portrait photography or you really like that shallow depth of field. But did this, like I said before, this, this is good for um, on the rides where it's really low light. Uh, that, and then also, uh, last but not least, uh, a macro lens, a true macro lens. This, uh, I like I like this one and I recommend it, is the Tamron 90mm f2.8. I uh, like it better than the Canon version, uh, but uh, there's a review that I have comparing the two. But uh, this one, uh, this will make your photography unique, meaning, uh, I use this one strictly at uh, at Epcot most of the time because I usually go in May and they have the the uh, flower festival there and you get some really nice close-up shots of flowers uh, there at the flower festival. Also, there um, they have a butterfly garden. It's really neat. You can go in there and get some uh, really nice close-ups of butterflies and stuff and. Uh, It'll just make your photography stick out a little bit more. So, uh, recap on that for the intermediate level. Um, replace your kit lens on your camera with uh, something that's uh, f2.8, uh, a little sharper. Uh, you can get a little bit better low light and uh, a, little, a little bit more shallow depth of field if you need it. Uh, uh, telephoto, like I was saying, 70 to 300 if you want to get something a little be here you can uh, nifty 50 or you could upgrade a little bit if you've got the money or just want something a little bit better um, and then your fish eye or ultra wide um, lens something that can get a bunch of stuff in the shot and then that's not a lot least uh, the Tamron 90 millimeter macro um, I didn't use this much too much uh, I forgot to mention at other parts just there at Epcot's, but uh, it's nice to have in your bag when you need it. So those were the uh, five lenses I would bring if I was an intermediate photographer. So all these lenses fit in your bag, say so you're the intermediate.